pages you have to memorize of stress. It appears we are live again. We have two special guests this evening. We're down a couple people. One is doing not fun things in St. Cloud, Minnesota this evening. And I think Pete said he had a meeting running late. So he may show up, may not. He's not very, uh, doesn't add much value here ever. So it's not like we need him or anything. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, the inevitable question that we get all the time is, hey, I'm done being an Army or Navy person. <clears throat> what do I do next? And that tends to be a tricky thing for people to answer. So there's some tools out there. We're going to discuss them. One of the things before I have our two guests introduce themselves to this evening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you guys to please bring more members to the page. And, and we've never been about the numbers. We've been about helping others. So this isn't a, we're not trying to expand this to 5 million people, but there's 22 million veterans here in the United States. We've got about 50,000 of you guys. That's it. Um, we need more people here so they can either mentor these younger guys getting out or we can get people the help that they need and with the information that we're, we're providing here. So our goal here at Battle Buddies has always been pretty simple, to be a proxy, to get you guys into the career fields that you're looking to get into by connecting you with others and giving you the tools to succeed. We're not gonna do the work for you, that may change once the 501c3 is approved here. Hopefully this time again, I get some funding. Um, but our, our goal is to just continue to do business as usual, to provide you the best information that we're aware of. And please bring some more people. It takes about five minutes to invite some really great people. We don't want numbers, we want quality people here. We don't need the distraction and the, whole uh, bearded, angry infantry vet guy that's popping around. We don't want that look here, okay? Who goes by weird names that they're not. So I'm gonna let these two introduce themselves. We go ladies first around here, uh, Mr. Infantry Guy. So do you just wait a second, okay? Thanks for that. Um, my name is Hey, hey, hey. Is, are you a lady now? Are you identifying as a lady? I, I, no. I, I, thought, I thought you met I thought you met me. I thought no. you met me. I Ladies definitely first. thought you met me. Ladies first. It's real easy. Oh well, my bad. Okay. All I'm right. not a lady today. Sorry. <laughs> All right, we'll let it slide today. All right. Uh, good yeah. times, good times. Uh, hi again. I'm Sarah Farstead. Been I was eleven years in the army, four from active duty. One tour through Iraq uh, in 0809, just south of Baghdad there. And now currently for the last nine years, I've been uh, with Earth Electronics in South Dakota and we manufacture electronic parts. And right now my current title is operations manager. So a little bit of logistics, some warehouse and some purchasing responsibilities. My turn? Is, is it my turn now? Yes, sir. Lady uh, oh, has okay. gone. Uh, okay, I'm just, I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. I don't, I don't want to, you know, take the spot again. Um, so, uh, my name is Andrew Seppi. Uh, Ten-year infantry for combat tours. Been with Battle Buddies since they started. Currently on the page as Ugi the Mad God. It's, it's my streamer page, um, not my actual profile. Um, so, I, I, I just watch, mostly. Um, Went to school, done 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 bunch of stuff with VA. Uh, pretty versed with that. Pretty, um, because I dealt with a lot of it. Uh, I reached out to a lot of people and have a lot of knowledge in there. So, how's that? Okay. So, one of the things I'm gonna do a screen share. I don't want to do a PowerPoint you to death. Uh, any of us that have been through a meeting and the talk, or you Fabit guys. I think fob, it's one of those words that I don't allow on the page to have a flag. Um, but we're pretty good at getting uh, PowerPointed to death. Sarah is a former staff officer, so I'm sure she's pretty good at doing PowerPoints, being a 
previous 04. So I did a little research. I launched my screen share and I found top 10 jobs in the army. Okay. So it's been a while, over 20 years since I've been in myself. So here's a list. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like you guys are maybe one of these army nurses. And we're going to take that MOS that you've got and then go and throw that over in this page right here. It's onetonline.org. And we're going to put all this stuff in here. So a couple of weeks ago, we had Carson on here with us and he did a great job going over this. So we figured we'd hit it again um, to kind of drill it through some brains because as we know, we can all be a little hard headed. And when uh, we can tell you, I know that you guys could tell me something a hundred times and until it applies to me, I'm not probably listening the way I need to be. So I think, what was that Oogie? 60, 68 Charlie. So we're gonna take 68 C into this. Oh, we got Keith Bean in here. So what I did is I went up into this crosswalks and then I clicked on military. And then what happens is, is you get a drop down for each branch of service and then you can throw your MOS in here. So I didn't know what a supply was. Apparently it's 92 Yankee. So that will pull up supply. So you can see here's nurses right here. So if you're a a practicing nurse specialist, apparently that's what it is on the enlisted side. These are the career fields that it's suggesting that you could take a look at. Now, this bright look and anything that's got a sun next to it is what this government, the government data is predicting will be the hot fields going forward. Hey, Keith, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude or uh, neglectful of you, but do you mind introducing yourself quick? Since you just jumped in here, you might be on mute, buddy. Top right corner or bottom, bottom left. It says he's still connecting. Might yep, be you're test connecting on audio. Yes, connection there issues. Go. There you go. Should be able to talk. Hey, Keith, just raise your hand and hopefully I catch you in the corner. I'll, I'll, uh, let you nope, yourself. still quiet. Uh, you're on mute. Okay. Um, so what you could do then is you can pop open this registered nurses, and then this is going to give you ideas for your resume when you have to start putting those together. So if you take a look at the skills that you did as an army nurse, and I know this is typically, all right, Keith here, let's see if, go ahead and give it a shot there, dude. You're still on mute, sorry. Um, so I got a few friends that are in nurses, family members. So um, maintaining accurate detailed reports and records, okay? So this is something that all nurses are gonna, going to do. When it comes to building your resume, everything should be quantifiable, okay? So why is this important? Now what this tells me is that this is just a baseline thing that you do for your job. Maintain accurate, how accurate? What was your percentage of accuracy? Sarah, you're always into, I'm guessing, defect rate or uh, picked order percentage of accuracy, right, in your job? Yeah, exactly, the numbers really speak so if somebody came in with a number here that was 33% accurate, I'm guessing Sarah probably wouldn't be too uh, overwhelmed to call that person for yeah, a job. Yeah, you can ask why. I mean, if you're gonna put a low number, have an explanation behind it generally, or don't put that bullet on there at all, right? Take a different one. Correct. Um, detailed reports. As a hiring manager, Sarah, uh, how would you want to see somebody expand detailed reports on their resume for what you're doing with the warehouse that you're in? Any ideas? Uh, for you guys? Yeah, I think for anybody with a detailed report, be looking at how often did you have to send a report? Is it a weekly, a daily, a quarterly, a monthly? Um, what was the intensity of it? Who did it go to? Did it just go to like your colleagues? Did it go up two levels to the president of the company? 
when it's talking about detailed reports, you know, really you or, or what you did with the detailed report created a macro in an Excel that saved an hour every week processing these reports, things like that would be something to specify what that detailed report brought to your company or, or your, what you were doing. Okay. I like that. All right. So now that we got some great feedback from Sarah on this, I'm a fan of my perfect resume. It's a pay service. So it's going to cost you guys a couple of dollars to get this, but you can use resume.com for free. Um, that it'll help you build. It'll, it's a nice generator. It doesn't have quite the same capabilities as my perfect resume does, but it's a free service. This is better in my opinion. And it's just my opinion than the ones that come with word or even Google docs, which is free. Um, so let's say that we were a nurse getting out of the army. Hello. When you start your work history, you're going to put into I heard you. your nursing piece in these little bullets, a couple of the things like Sarah mentioned right in here. Okay. So you can go and take maintained accurate records, start your bullet off with that, and then start typing out all of the performance indicators that would go with that. So every one of you that's an officer and NCO, you definitely will have some KPIs coming out of the army, key performance indicators. Um, I don't know if the other branches call them something else, but it's the, what did you do and how well did you do it number? Um, hey, Oogie, are you guys running on lower enlisted uh, uh, reviews on those guys still when you got out a few years back as an uh, NCO? Monthly counselings? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, okay. my God. Okay. So, same thing. You know, if you are fortunate enough to have Mr. Sape as your, your staff sergeant, um, you should have some stuff that says how well you did while you were on active duty. And you should be able to use that as a baseline going forward. So one of the things that I'd like to talk about, and I don't want to sit there and show a display the whole time. Hey, Keith, you want to try uh, introducing yourself now? Is it working now? Yes. Yes. Oh, there you go, bud. Good. You're good. It, no, it, it's just like the Xbox app is kind of weird on the computer. It's, it's different. Yeah. Um, all right, my name is Keith Bean. Um, I've been a member since uh, Battle Buddies was right about 7,000 members deep. Uh, I've, been, I've been fairly active. Um, I used to be a moderator for Chuck. Um, have complete faith in this guy. i made really good friends with Ugg with this page. Um, he, uh, he's a different specimen, to say the least. Um, and now I'm your tech support. Right. Um, I appreciate y'all including me into the, on this because there's a, there's a lot of information that could be correlated and passed around to our vets on this page. And I hope that y'all get every bit of information and every piece of information that y'all want out of the meetings that Chuck is now holding on this page because they are very, very beneficial. Thanks. Okay. Um, and you want to tell everybody what branch you were in quick? I, I, I was army. I'm, I'm 82nd Airborne Division. Um, I was a 68 Juliet, which or which was initially a 91 Juliet, which was medical logistics. Um, it's another good uh, transitioning field to go from the the military sector to the civilian sector. Um, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that actually with the uh, I'm trying to find the right word. The stuff that you will get coming out of there that transfers over to the civilian sector to use that as correlating on your resume, per se. Okay. I forgot what I was talking about prior to having you introduce yourself, Keith. Uh, bro, I don't even know. You're building more. a resume. Oh, what yeah. Building, <laughs> building, yeah. building a resume. Tra transferring counseling and COERs yeah. and such. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I've seen – kind of trip people up is um, they might think that their background is insignificant, um, that it might not be enough and they'll go to stretch their resume out or maybe even make it look bigger than what it was. So 
The danger of that is you, you could bite off more than you can chew. Um, you get in front of an experienced person like me that's going to hire you or Sarah, um, and we might start calling you out on some things. Um, I've had people that I've been bringing on for sales roles talk about how good of a prospector they are in front of me and how they cold call every single day. And I've literally pushed the desk phone to them, turned around, gave them my cell phone number, and told them to sell me. And you don't wanna be put in that position because we can smell when something's not right. We know when you've done 14 hours of work in a day, but you're only actually working six, we know what to expect, what's reasonable. So just think of yourself as coming out of the army or Navy or whatever, if you know, you're a one or two enlistment kind of person as in a similar position, like a college intern. So you've got a good amount of, you, you went through a, a trade school basically for you know four to 10 years or whatever and position yourself as the person that's still pretty raw, coachable, trainable, and you're ready for that next level. Sarah, what's your take on that one? I agree. I think that's really what you need to project to your future uh, employers potentially. So don't get caught up in, in trying to overwhelm somebody with all of this stuff, you know? I mean, just be straight up with them and you know, if you ask me, I, I believe that vets are some of the most trainable people on this planet, even more trainable than a puppy. Oogie's even trainable. Sort of. This is true. This is yeah. true. Semi-trainable. And that's, that, that gives people hope. Okay. Um, question on that topic? Do you ever feel that that sometimes almost sets our vets back a little bit because we're all so used to such a structured top down, do as you're told, do it this way, do it only this way. And some jobs out there are very much like, oh, okay, yeah, um, so ship this stuff and then just figure it out how to do it on your own. Is that a concern that we've got too many folks that are maybe floundering a little bit in the transition or do you think that that isn't really a big issue that we've heard of? So okay. here's, here's what I've seen is at least enlisted, okay? Now you went to college, then went into the army. So you're a little different position than a guy like us three. So my mindset getting out was that I wasn't qualified till I was certified to run the M2, you know? And even though that weapon system, it's, it's unique, right? But it's still a firearm there's still bad guys out there downrange and you have to stop and eliminate them. So, you know, my mindset was is that if I don't cover that bingo card exactly how it says with that specific thing, then it doesn't count. So I'll give you an example. There's a bunch of different CRM systems that are out there. So if you know how to do, you know, this client relationship manager, uh, contact management relationship system, Let's say you're using SAP at one place or you're using Salesforce at another. If a vet, their brain is, is that this says that I need to have experience on salesforce.com and they use, but we've used SAP. So they might say, well, I don't have the five years that required there. The thing is, is that you do, you just have CRM in a different capacity. So those transferable pieces I think to a lot of us kind of are elusive. We've got the skills, but I think that a lot of guys aren't really comfortable until they've actually used that specific thing. That's what I've seen. I, I don't know. I, I mean, and, and, you know, being process orientated and indoctrinated in that at a really young age, um, you know, I, I can say that I used to be real particular on how I do a lot of things. And then when I worked at Sprint Next, tell my boss was a lieutenant colonel out of the Navy or the Navy. That's technically the Navy, the Marine Corps. Um, you know, he was uh, of the mindset of sell it, let's get it done and we'll figure it out. And then like the world opened up to me. So I was stuck in that on that 
hamster wheel myself for a long time. And I think that worked against me for probably a good 10 years after I got out right in there. How about yourself? Oogie, what's up with you, dude? Uh, I, I think you're right. I will also add the same thing I always add. I think most veterans forget to market how trainable exactly they are. At 18 years old, you were in, th in charge of thousands of dollars, like hundreds of thousand dollars worth of equipment, and you didn't fuck it up. 18 year old, you know what, what other jobs give you that opportunity and nobody puts that on their resume or they put it as a bullet at the end of their career. The employer, a, a regular civilian doesn't understand that you were doing that at 18 years old. You, 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 you had immense responsibility at 18 years old and you fulfilled it without screwing it up. Well, most of the times and I'll poops, but you, you know what I mean? And, and like, I, I think veterans really have a hard time um, translating their skills. And we talk about it all the time. So it's kind of like beating a dead horse, but I, I feel like it needs to be said every single time. So I, I'm um, gonna put out a disclaimer on the trainable thing. So the mindset in the corporate world is you went to college, you should be trained, right? Or I'm not willing to take a gamble on someone who's marginally trained but capable and competent because they've been burned 50 times out of 50 times. And they haven't had a vet come through who is trainable. So, you know, this, this, this ability to take this nail clipper and, you know, dig a, a foxhole is something that the four of us could do. We wouldn't be happy about it but your average civilian is going to be like, well, I'm certified to run the excavator. Uh, give me five minutes. I'm going to go bring that thing over here. And, you know, the kind of, I don't know, it kind of works against us, right? We'll just start digging in because that's what the sergeant told us to do. Well, that's another thing. Uh, it's a very valid point. V vets are, in general, veterans are very, very adaptable creatures. Um, it's like you said, you can give me, you can give me a freaking nail filer and tell me to dig a hole and I'll figure it, I'll figure it out. Like I'm going to make it happen, which is advantage over your average. And I'm not, I'm not talking down to people, but vets are not afraid to step outside of their box, outside of their spectrum of what they're supposed to know and supposed to do and go accomplish a goal with virtually no tools if they have to. If you tell a veteran, go do this, I don't care how you do it, he's going to figure it out. Like, it's going to happen. He's going to put everything he is into accomplishing that. Like, veterans are very goal-driven, and that is instilled into you. It's like a systematic thing that military does to all of us. They instill into you that if you have a goal, you have to meet it no matter what. Well, if we don't succeed, somebody gets hurt bad. That's the difference. Really bad sometimes. Um, so Are one last, that? I'm sorry. I was going to ask if I could put a. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Keith. Um, and th this is basically from personal experience too. I've seen a lot of companies go where they have, they like, like you're saying, some companies have restrictions. Some companies won't allow you to do certain things and the adaptability that a vet can bring to that facility or to that specific work acclimat that they're trying to establish themselves in. Um, this is a reason why I've seen a lot of companies actually go more vet oriented because of the adaptability and the, the ability to adapt on the fly to be able to get stuff done which is, it's absolutely an amazing thing to, to see. So just to like backbone on like what, what y'all were saying, vets, veterans are goal oriented and driven and whatever, whatever, uh, whatever fast say that you put in front of them, more times, nine out of 10 times, they're going to break that down. They're going to get nine. it done for that individual. More than nine, well, Keith. Yeah, I'd say I, I can say hundred, hundred percent. I mean, I have to, I have to, I have to give uh, Oogie a little leeway there. So, so, okay. but it, I mean, like I said, it's it's amazing. It's an, an amazing thing to see. Um, 
the the adaptability and the fortitude that a vet will bring into a the civilian sector to get stuff done. So one last thing that I'm going to show you guys on the ONET here is I want to show you if you let's say you want a new career the the what is it the the world is your oyster is that how that goes or something like that. So there's a pretty slick tab over here on the find occupations. You go to bright outlook here. Okay. You pop this baby open. And if you want to get some of these rapid growth jobs, you can find all kinds of crazy stuff on here that might give you some, uh, some new ideas. So, Bakers, barbers, baristas, the candlestick maker might be on here, bartenders, bicycle repairs. Um, what do you, oh, here we go. You know what, cyber is a big thing. Where's cyber? So I've seen a lot of guys coming out lately with cyber technology, that's a hot field. I don't see it on here under cyber anyways. But emergency management directors, you can get, you can take a look and see what types of tasks these guys are doing every single day. You can get an idea if it fits in with your background. This should give you an idea of what kind of training you might have to go get in order to do that. And uh, what is that? Chapter 31, is that what Voc Rehab is? You might be able to get uh, they, some. Yeah, it, it is. And they changed the name of it. And quick caveat, you can start application process for, for it on uh, eBenefits now. Okay. So, you know, the military might have, some, the VA might have some training for you. Um, but if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you can even see what kind of income on every job to include this. And this comes from the Department of Labor of what type of salary expectations. I must have clicked on something wrong, sorry. It showed 70,400,000, you know, 70, let's just call it $75,000 an hour to be an emergency management director. And that'll kind of give you that military hoo rush stuff. So way to get there, real simple, find occupations, bright outlook, pop that open, there's a bunch of, you know, number of job outlook, all of this other stuff, right? Look, occupations, whatever. Just poke around on there, guys. Get yourself some ideas. What well, was and, the other one that you're looking for? Uh, IT cybersecurity, maybe? Yeah, that's uh, probably it, Keith. Okay. Yep. It's, it's, it's probably, it's either under IT or computer communications. Is yeah, that's, where yeah. It's at. yeah. So, you know, it's, the, the world's changing. Um, a lot i think with this recent thing with covid i think that we're going to see that business has got to change quite a bit to have some redundancy to be able to move people into their homes for who knows how long uh, same with the kids so there's going to be a lot of new hot jobs popping up in technology because of this um, so like always if you got questions put them up on the facebook page you'll see People respond with a lot of great, great ways of doing things. Um, so anything that we put up here tonight, feel free to ask us in the comments below. Um, like I said, don't be a blue falcon. Get your buddies invited to the page. And if everybody just, this is kind of like when, you know, you're in rush hour traffic. If everybody would just do the speed limit, we get home on time, right? So I get that the request might seem unreasonable. But just just invite five, six people, you know, that are that are cool people that should be here who love America and love vets. How's that sound? Just five people today. Six, six is a bonus. And don't do a hundred like I did the other day. A Facebook will tell you that you're a spammer. <laughs> so annoying. Okay. Like um, hey, so one final thing on the wrap up here. Uh, what would you suggest that I, I'm one of those guys that believes that you can do anything for a week, anything. So one new best practice for people to try world according to yourself, 
what would your advice be, Sarah? Um, let's see, I would say, don't be afraid to throw your net wider. Um, don't feel like you're stuck where you're at right now. If you're feeling maybe a little bit lost or maybe a little bit challenged in your job search, whether you've transitioned or not, you know, use that one net, that bottom feature where you have the different locations, you know, go into even like a, a major city within a state and you can look for careers. If you want to be a bicycle repairman, go out to Portland, check out the jobs in Portland. Um, so don't feel like you're, you're pigeonholed into your geographical region. Be okay checking out other jobs in something you're interested at somewhere else in the U.S. or the world for that matter. So Nice. The, the madman himself, Oogie Boogie, Seppe. I, I would say don't, don't be afraid to step out of your field. Um, look, into, look into entrepreneurship. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of vets are, well, one, those vets that do venture into that field are very successful from what I see from, from personal experience and, and friends. And I feel like a lot of vets are simply too used to um, being in that structured environment. And they're, they're too or they don't even think about starting their own business and going their own route, look into local programs, look into what's available for you. Start, start figuring out what your hobbies and what you like and, and start, start making business out of it. It's a, we live in America. It's a great opportunity and you can make a business out of it. Um, me and Keith both right now are streamers and we're making bounds and leaps daily, honestly. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> and I just sat down and I was like, you know what? I love video games and I, I love interacting with new people and boom, it's happening. Nice. Mr. Bean, final words of advice um, for these fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. Go ahead. Don't ever tell yourself no. That's good. Make it, make it a habit to tell yourself that you can. And that, yes, you are going to do this because that's the downside I see from a lot of vets. They, they get stuck. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back on uh, what the madam said up there. Don't limit yourself. Don't tell yourself no because that could be detrimental to you and you providing better for your family and for yourself. So my parting words are if you're able to transition into something, the number one thing that you should be looking at is happiness because at the end of the day, when you're happy, it won't even feel like work. It sounds like some shit your grandpa would probably say, and your grandpa was right, even though he's old, super old probably, um, because regardless of our financial situation, we're going to spend whatever is sent our way. So why be doing something that's a complete pain in the ass when you can, you know, stick within a budget and just be happy and, you know, your stress will go down, your lifestyle will increase and you'll just be a lot nicer of a person. So that's all I got to say. We're at our time, guys. Appreciate everybody joining in tonight and watching us. So and join us next week after you send at least five people our way. We'll prove them. This is from Oogie. We got it. We run everybody through the NSA data bank with him. <laughs> and if y'all want me back, let me know. Yep. Anybody that's ever comes on the show is always welcome to return at any given time. That's all we got for tonight. Thank you for joining in.